put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. District 9 Move View. In 1981, a large alien craft stopped over Johannesburg. And after three months, there still hadn't been any further activity from it, so it was decided to cut in and see what was in there. And they found millions of these, they're referred to as prawns, and they do kind of look like large shrimp. They're, they're slightly larger than human beings, and they were pretty destitute. They were malnourished, and they were then flown down to Johannesburg where District 9 was created and they each got a... They, they got shacks to live in and now, 20 years later, they are going to be moved from District 9 because a lot of people think that too much money is being spent keeping them there and there, there are various problems and we meet I'm going to mispronounce the heck out of this. Mikas van de Merwe. Mikas, from now on. He is sent to lead the operation, I guess, of getting them all to sign. They, they get 24-hour notice of being evicted, and he's leading the operation, going out and getting those signatures. <laughs> Not all of them, personally, but yeah. He's in charge of the operation, working for MNU, Multinational something, corporation, yeah. And he is not a nice guy, let's put it like that. Although the audience perception of him does change some. In fact, over the course of the film it changes so much that you almost get whiplash if it wasn't for this being so well made. And that's pretty much all I'm going to give away of the plot. But yeah, something happens that changes things for Mikas. And yeah, the film pretty much shows every major horrible thing that we human beings have ever done to each other as, yeah, being done to these aliens. And it's... one, one might call it manipulative, but it doesn't really you know, point the finger and say, ah, oh, this is... So, it, if anything, it's really just saying we shouldn't mistreat anyone who... Yeah, basically, and, you know, equal rights for all. And if you argue with that, then you and I are not going to be very good friends. So, yeah, it's... It, and it's not... It's not like Avatar where it's completely one-sided. There are you know, kind of good and bad on both sides. And the aliens are, if you'll pardon the expression, quite human. 
And in fact, there, there are not a lot of alien characters in the film, but the best character in the film is definitely one of the aliens. And possibly the best relationship between characters is between two aliens. So, yeah. And do, do know, they're, they're always CGI, so that's quite impressive. That's, you, you genuinely care that much about them. But yes, it, it brings to mind, you know, the Nazis, Dr. Mengele very much, the atrocities of apartheid, and that's, of course, the, the unique setting for a sci-fi picture is very intentional. This was where apartheid happened in South Africa, and in fact, a lot of the people working on it, there's, there's like one American act. You know, pretty much everyone is, like, South African, including the director and the lead actor, Neil Blomkamp and Charlotte Copley, respectively. And they both do amazing for a debut. It, I'd, I'd have to say I'm most impressed by Neil Blomkamp because direct, directing a movie is a huge responsibility, and he did fantastic for this piece. It's, it's not the first time he's directing, but it's the first feature film. He's done some shorts, I believe he did some ads before this, and Charles Hill was one of the people who just kind of worked with him, and then he got the lead in this, and yeah. And it might give you an idea of just how well Charles Hill Copley did, that the very next year after this, Charlotte Copley got one of the parts in the A-Team movie. Yeah, that one of the four leads, you know, along with freaking Liam Neeson, you know, and, and Bradley Cooper. I have not seen a lot of Bradley Cooper in movies, but I hear he's really good. I've pretty much just seen the A-Team and then his role in Alias, but I do quite like him. And... Yeah, it's, you, you really see the, the unique visual sense of, of Neil Blomkamp in this film, and he, the man's got a twisted sense of humor, but I can't help but laugh along. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty dark at times, but yeah, and, and that also helps it being, you know, to, to keep it from being just pure bleakness with, as I said, all these atrocities that at times you do get a little bit of comic relief. To return to the atrocities, it also does, oh, and I meant to say, it's partially based on the experiences of Neil Blomkamp growing up during apartheid, and he is white though, during, uh, dur in South Africa. I believe even in Johannesburg, actually. And the, the, the film does also get into some more recent atrocities. You know, the whole private military corporation kind of thing, and yeah, the, the profit motive at its worst, scientific objectivity at its worst, and while it does fit in just an immense amount of, you know, cruel, cruel deeds, it never feels forced and it doesn't feel rushing to, to fit them all in. It, it comes across very naturally and it feels, it feels in character, it feels like, because the thing the thing is, and that's why it's so clever to use this, to use aliens, they don't see, the, the people in charge do not see them as human beings, as, as good as human beings. And that was exactly, that was what was said about the Jews during World War II. And, you know, pick one major atrocity of some time, and one side was saying that the other was less than human, or something along those lines, you know. They were saying that they don't deserve what we deserve. Yeah. 
the and the, I'd, I'd also I'd have to say this is the best sci-fi with social commentary since like Starship Troopers, and I love that film. Paul Verhoeven really needs to get back. So anyway, maybe Neil Blomkamp is going to be the new Verhoeven. It's fast moving. It's it's really gripping. It just grips you right from the start and does not let go. And I don't say that about a lot of movies. I've said that about The Terminator, the original, and this movie, and I stand by that. That's These are the, the two that I would really, yeah. It's tense, it's, yeah, it, it just never stops moving. And every time you think that it's gonna slow down or anything, it just keeps going and spiking the, the pace. And the, nah, I, I suppose I should really shouldn't give that away. The approach is really interesting. We've had a lot of movies about the alien invasion. And as, as I've already said, this is taking that concept and turning it on its head with the aliens being the victims rather than an invading force. We are the real perpetrators in this alien invasion. It, it, alien encounter story, and in addition, the visual approach is part faux documentary, where it's really, there, there are these sit-down interviews where you, right from the beginning, you can tell that something's happened, you don't know what yet, it's kind of the non-linear timeline thing, it's like, some of the interview clips you see from right away, they're like talking about, you know, some of the stuff they say is based on what happens over the course of the movie. They don't give any details away. You just get the sense of something's horrible. Something horrible is going to happen with this the whole thing. And yeah, you, it's yeah, it's it's edited together like a documentary with these sit down interviews, and a lot of the stuff is like filmed by, you know, like a cameraman actually goes along with. Mikus when he goes out to get signatures and stuff, and he talks to the camera. And it's very, very natural, and you really get to you get to know him in that way. And some of it is gotten from some of the footage for this documentary is from like security cameras, and it's you know a little more grainy. It's maybe black and white footage and such. And then on the other hand, you have these more filming parts, which are all done handheld. And I'd have to say, this is the best handheld I've ever seen. It is never tiring. It, is, it never gets excessive with, like, shaky cam. You can always tell what's going on. You can always clearly follow what is happening. I, I really wish that more, more handheld, you know, more handheld cinematography would take notes from this movie. Because it's just amazing how well it does. And it gets that... You know, it, it has that POV feel to it. It's it's not really found footage. You know, like I said, it's a documentary, and then you have this real stuff, which is you know stuff that couldn't have been filmed with the documentary cameras, and it's not presented as if it is documentary. And it yeah, it, it it's very immersive. You feel like you're there. That's the benefit of this kind of POV handheld kind of approach, and it's incredibly effective. All of the action feels really up close and personal. It just, it's, it's inescapable. It's not something you're looking at and on, on a screen. No, it's right in front of you, and you feel like the bullets might almost hit you. It's incredibly effective. And the action is also just, yeah, it's, it also feels very real. The, the approach to it is to make it incredibly realistic and have it yeah, very, very gritty. It never feels like someone is firing a gun for longer than they should be able to. It doesn't feel like anyone suddenly has bad aim because it's necessary. And, you know, I, I will say that is not unique. That's, that's been a bit of a... I'd say it's almost a common approach to action nowadays since like 2005, mid-2000s. But it is incredibly effective here as it is other places. The movie's 100 minutes, not counting the credits, 
and it just it flies right by. I, you don't even notice the time is passing. Every shot feels real. It feels like what you're seeing happen is actually happening and someone just managed to capture it on film. The exposition is incredibly smoothly delivered. This is another thing where I, I'll, I'll bring up Terminator again. That movie has a ton of exposition, but you don't really notice it because it's always during the chase. This has a lot of exposition as well, but partially because of the documentary angle and also just the way it's done. It just, it feels very natural. There's never really a line of dialogue which is completely unnecessary or, yeah, anything. I wouldn't have cut anything from this film, and that maybe sounds a little strange since it's really not a very long film, but yeah, it just it makes good use of its time, is what I'm saying. Something's constantly happening, and it's not, it's not overpowering either. The action is so well balanced, and the, I already mentioned that this is an incredibly fast-moving film. It's not so fast that you lose track, or that it's, you know, it's not fast in that it's it's not trying to distract you from a bad plot or something. Everything that happens is in service of the plot and the characters. There is very little Hollywood in this and it's it's very much to its benefit. That's also part of why it's so good. It, it has a lot of stuff where you're like, it's not seriously not, oh man, that really happened. And yeah, it's, it's like, it's like Robert Rodriguez's philosophy, you know, if you, you can't make a Hollywood movie on a low budget and, you know, with, with no names, so don't. Make the not Hollywood movie. Make the move that they're not going to, you know, put something in your movie that Hollywood is too scared to put in their movie, you know. It's also an incredibly hard to, movie to watch, and that may, that may almost sound obvious when I mentioned that it fits in an astounding amount of atrocities, but I hadn't watched this. This is only my second viewing. I got the DVD just recently. The first time I watched it was literally back in 2009 when it came out. And the reason I haven't done a video review before because that was like just a few months, I think, before I started doing video reviews. So yeah. And I had forgotten how unbelievably brutal and gruesome, violent it is, and it's not, it's, when, when you talk about a lot of violence, you do really have to distinguish, this is not the B-movie kind of violence where you're enjoying it, it's not the violence where you're, you know, when, when something violent happens, you're either, you know, disgusted, you, you think, oh, man, why did that have to happen? They didn't deserve that happening to them. Or you're, excuse me, you're kind of cheering on because it's, it's happening to a bad guy and, excuse me, and you, you know that that guy really deserved it. And that's also something I really want to mention. This movie earns its cheers. There's a lot of movies that have people like, oh, you know, cheering. The, the good guys on and stuff like that and that's that's not that difficult of a thing to do overall basically I'm not really saying it's not a bad thing to not earn them but it's more interesting when they're earned it's more satisfying when they're earned and especially the climax of this movie it is so earned you you just really you I literally just shout out yes I really hope that my neighbors didn't, weren't too bothered by that. I didn't think I, yeah, I don't know what they might have thought. Now, a little backstory is worth explaining. Basically, Neil Blomkamp was going to direct the Halo movie back in 2009, and that fell through. So basically, Peter Jackson said, you know, here's 30 million, go make a movie. And this is what he made. And it's kind of also, he had already done a short, short film that was kind of like this. 
and also with Shorten Copley, and yeah, they, they wanted to do a full-length version of it, and happily he is very satisfied with it. Not entirely, but you, you never are. When I, I've dabbled in creative works myself, you're, you're never completely satisfied. But yeah, he is fairly satisfied and he has yeah, good reason to be. Now, that actually covers most of it. I will say that among all the inhumanity of our species that is seen, there is also a lot of humanity, and that really is what keeps this from being just, you know, exploitation, kind of, it, I think this is not really a B movie. It is a movie that is that that gets you thinking and really shakes you and and stays in your mind and creates debate. And and again, I do want to mention very much the aliens aren't completely innocent. I I'm not saying they they don't at all deserve the treatment that they get in the movie, but they're also not being presented as just, again, this is not Avatar. They're not just this ideal race of people where everything is happy and sunshine and flowers. No, they do actually, there's actually a very interesting trait of this movie. Early on, in, as part of the documentary, you hear all these people talking about, oh, these, these alien elves, they'll, they'll do this and that, and, and you're not really sure what of it to believe. And the, the, the movie never makes it clear if they're lying because it's, it's, that's what you do when, when you have a group of people that you really hate. You're going to make up stories about them. You might not even notice it. You might not even think that you're making up stories. It's just that they become the scapegoat and you project everything evil that you could possibly think of onto them. And the great thing is that the movie never does. It never, neither confirms nor denies these theories. I guess it's you know, classified. And yeah, that, that has a really great effect because you, at, at first you kind of, you, you almost understand the, the people as well. I mean, you, you sympathize with the aliens from pretty much right away. But you can also kind of see where at least some of the people are coming from. And you yourself feel a little uneasy about the aliens. They 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 are strong, and yeah, it's we don't know their culture. We we can't be sure how they're going to act or react. Now, the and this of course deals with the issue of a ghetto and sudden eviction. A lot of the sci-fi aspects are nicely subtle. The film was actually supposed to take place in like 2010, I think, and it does kind of feel like, I mean, pretty much everything we see in the movie that is, you know, something we human beings do not have today is alien technology. And everything else, it does have, it, it might look a little different than it than it maybe would, or that we'd expect it to, but it's not really something that couldn't exist. And that makes it, again, very credible. It, it sucks you in. You, you believe that it's going on before your eyes. And it, it, it obviously is a, a tough pill to swallow with this completely alternate reality. A, you know, a Johannesburg where there were aliens in as as part of the, the the ghetto. That is very interesting. And that's also something very much worth noting. A lot of the really disturbing background stuff and you know, pr pretty much most of the slums, I understand, those are real. You, you see like dead animals it's real. That's they, they went into the slums and they filmed the real shacks and it's it's disturbing and it makes you makes you think and that's that's again what 
part of what makes this movie so powerful. You can't just go away and say, that would never happen. It has happened. It literally has. And those weren't aliens, those were human beings. And all those slums you see, they're real. The, the people live in those. And it, it gets to you. And I... I and it, this is something that too much of the Western world has really kept at, at a bit of a distance, because we don't know how to deal with it. And I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to preach here, I swear. And this movie really forces us to think about that. I'm done with that, I swear. The, it's, it's also very gritty. It just, yeah, everything feels very real. The effects are really excellent. I, like I said, $30 million. 30, and the, the effects are some of the best I've ever seen. It is so well integrated. You really believe that the aliens are there and the interaction between live action and CGI is just seamless. There, there were parts where I, th I, I, I mean, I listened to the director's commentary in preparation for this review, and one thing that I would have bet money was an effect shot was apparently completely real. And yeah, it's. And that's also part of why we really sympathize with the aliens. We, we really believe they're there. And also, immense credit goes out to it. It's one actor playing all the, all, every moving alien, except for the, you know, smaller ones, like kid aliens and such. And, yeah, it's just, he adds so much, you know, it's, it's the kind of, it's, it's like with Gollum. Some, some, an, an actor moves around in the suit and, yeah, they, they add the effect later and the guy has incredible talent. You, you, thankfully, they did put his face in there. He's, he plays the documentarian as well and he talks to the camera several times in, yeah, as, as, as you do as documentarian. I really wish I had memorized his name. I am so sorry, dude. Act in more movies. Work with Neil Blomkamp again. I will watch it. Now, the... Also, the effects never take over. They're very much, again, in service of the plot, in service of the characters. There's never an effect shot just to have an effect shot. I will also say, this is a really enjoyable thriller, action thriller, I suppose you could call it, and there are some truly awesome moments in there that, you know, if, if you like science fiction and you like action, you have got to watch this movie. If at all you can imagine that you can sit through all the, all the horrible things that you also see, because they did it's difficult to watch, and if if you have to ask, you probably shouldn't watch it. And I... Oh, actually, I wanted to also make sure to mention the acting is phenomenal. I, I already mentioned Charlotte and Copley, and although I could make a long video just talking about him, his acting, just, everyone does a great job. They just... Yeah, there, there's this, like I already mentioned, this private military group, and they're, they're very believable, and you have this Nigerian gang, and just, again, very credible, a lot of just normal people, and yeah, the, the MNU, where were some, yeah, whatever the corporation's called, everyone is credible. And again, keep in mind, there's hardly a familiar face to be found in this movie. It's, yeah, it's, it's one of those movies that really defies what, I mean, I'm, the, the, the consensus of, of big budget, of, of making big movies, big successful movies says, you gotta have familiar faces, you gotta have, you know, familiar location, you gotta set it somewhere. That the, you gotta have clear cut good guys and bad guys, and we gotta be the good guys. And all this stuff, and this movie just turns it all on its head and works so well. 
and it helps to really prove that sometimes, sometimes, if done right, you can go completely against the grain and come out incredibly successful. Now, the... Yes, I wanted to mention there is a very clear inspiration from the 1980s The Fly and you know, the David Cronenberg movie and it's... yeah. They, they do justice to their, their inspirations, both in the, yeah, in the Starship Troopers and The Fly, and probably some others as well, but yeah, it's... Watch this movie, if at all you can stand to see the ugliest side of humanity being, you know, having a great beacon of light shown, sh 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 shined? directly upon it, watch this movie immediately. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.